Alrighty, how are you doing? Um, I haven't made a video in a couple of weeks. I've been a bit sick, so um, if I'm a little bit awkward, uh, I apologize, but I haven't done this in a while. And um, But now, I'm back in peak physical condition, so um, I'm ready to bring you more, more Bitwig uh, things. So today we're going to be looking at one of the simplest devices in Bitwig. Um, just to keep it easy. Um, so we've got the pitch shifter here. Um, it's only got three knobs. Um, so yeah, very simple. We'll go through it first and then I'll show you kind of traditional ways of using it as I normally do. And then I'll show you some weird stuff you can do with it. And uh, yeah, hopefully that will be helpful to you. So first of all, let's just have a look. Uh, the first track I've got here is just a vocal. Go I'm just going to show you how you would traditionally use this. So the three controls on this are the grain here, and then you've got pitch here in the middle, and you've got a mix, which just mixes the effect in. The pitch is just controlling semitones, so we can go up and down an octave. And we can do that if we drag here, we can do it real fine. Well, we can go in between semitones, and if we drag up here on the actual semitone denominator itself, we can uh, do it in increments of exact semitones. So that's the pitch control, very simple. And then we've got the grain control, which is controlling how... Uh, sort of big and dense the grains are that it's using to change the pitch. So when it's changing the pitch, it's basically chopping the audio up into little sections and it's uh, sort of moving them apart and changing the pitch in that way. So if I pull this down, you can hear quite easily what it's doing. So I'm going to pull the grains all the way down. So up here at the top, they're very densely packed together. And then down here at the bottom, uh, it uh, actually tells you in hertz how often they're happening. So uh, one hertz is, so that's the speed at which the grains are being produced. So you can hear it almost sounds like an echo. So the other thing you can do is obviously once you've got this pitch down, in this case, um, we've got a pitch down 12 semitones, you can mix it in with the original signal. And sometimes um, changing the grain amount to some weird kind of grain, like really low or really high, can give you a kind of a cool echoey effect. So let's uh, have a listen to that. So that is functionally everything that it does. Um, just a couple of things to note about how it works. When you pull the grains up above this default value here in the middle, because the grains are so tightly packed together, let me just pause that. Because the grains are so tightly packed together, uh, they start to impart a bit of a pitch themselves. So uh, you, at the very high values, won't be getting the exact pitch that you've set in the semitones. You can hear the pitch kind of moves. So for the best results as an actual pitch shifter, you probably just want to keep it right there in the middle. So um, let's say that we wanted to mess around with the grains without affecting the pitch. How will we do that? Um, we can just add another one of these and pitch it up. And let's mix them both 100%. So now you can hear it's the same pitch. Um, but it sounds kind of weird because obviously it's being put through two of these and this grain thing is happening But now we can mess around with the grains and make weird stuff happen. So let's just mess around with these so you can hear kind of how uh, it cool can sound. So it's sort of like um, a rudimentary granular processor. Um, and obviously we can, uh, let's not hit that, we can add loads of these because that's better than just adding some. So let's now try this. So 
Please. you can sort of use the pitch shifter as a weird granular processor thing and you can you know I, I like to add a bunch of these on top of stuff and then just set a macro to all these grain amounts and have them be weird uh, I'm not sure exactly uh, let's just try our best to set these as I should have So yeah, you can do some weird grain stuff. And then obviously we could slightly change these pitches as well. Um, let's just change them a tiny little bit there and see how cool that sounds. So another thing you can do obviously is change the pitch sort of massively between them. And that's gonna be weird as well. Um, so yeah, I'll show you a couple of tricks with um, putting them in effects chains uh, later. Just for another example, I'm just going to show you here on uh, a percussion loop here. So you can kind of stack them up on top of each other, modulate the pitch, modulate the grains, make the grains really weird. Let's just stack another few of these, can't hurt. So, and then you're going to get these really weird granular cloud effects. So yeah, you can use it as a cool granular processor, um, uh, as well as a pitch shifter. So let's look at a couple examples of using it in a more uh, musical way, I suppose. Um, so one of the coolest ways to use it is on other effects. So uh, here I've got a reverb, and let me just turn off, uh, here in the wet effects I've got something that I'm going to show you to turn this into sort of a weird granular reverb. But up here, I'm going to show you a really basic use of this, probably the most common thing it gets used for, which is to turn the stock reverb into a shimmer reverb by putting it in the tank effects. So I explained this in my reverb video, but how the tank effects works is basically the reverb is uh, a chain of delays, and every time it cycles through that delay, it puts it through the effect again, so the effect kind of increases exponentially over time. So let's have a listen to this sound without the pitch shifter on it. So it's just the reverb on a basic synth sound. So just a regular um, pad sound with the reverb on it. And now let's add this pitch shifter to turn our regular reverb into a shimmer reverb. So you can hear as it goes on, it's pitching up. Uh, you can mess around with this as well. So because you've got this grain control here, you can, I set it so that it sounds kind of grainy down here, but you can also have it be a bit cleaner. Or you can set it way up high and get really pitchy effects or down really low and have it be really grainy sounding. You may even want to set it to sort of a weird amount, like an inharmonic amount so that it sounds really harsh. So you can get some cool effects doing that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you was using it on the wet effects, sort of similar to what I did earlier, where I'm basically just using this as a granular processor. So let's turn that on. 
And let's have a listen to it with this sort of weird grainy sound. So yeah, you can get some really cool sort of glitched out reverb effects doing that, or you could even uh, modulate it. So I've got it just modulated here with an LFO. Let me just turn that up. And you can hear as you move through the, the grains, you're gonna get sort of weird pitchy effects. Another thing that's good to experiment with is if we bring in a stereo processor here, so a stereo split device, and let's pop this into the left channel, and then let's just make a copy of this chain and put it into the right channel here. So now we've got these two chains, which are exactly the same in independent channels. And all this is is just the pitch shifters, once again, stacked up on top of each other. And let's just change where this is a little bit. And now we're gonna get a weird stereo grain thing going on. So yeah, that can be pretty cool for creating weird sound effects and stuff like that. Uh, now let's just have a look at it on a delay, which is another good way of using it. You can use this to create a um, granular delay, obviously, uh, where it's all grainy, and you can also use it to create pitched delays, where your delay will pitch up each time it goes through a feedback cycle. Um, so let's just have a listen at how we can mess around with the delay. It's very similar to how you do it with the reverb, but uh, just to show that as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm just modulating this macro that's attached to the grain amounts. And by moving the grain amounts instead of the pitch, I'm obviously changing the graininess of the sound. Um, but I'm also slightly changing the way that the pitch sounds because I'm moving through the grain. So you're getting a really subtle, not so subtle, but subtle-ish kind of pitch wobble happening as well as uh, sort of grain clouds popping up everywhere. So let me change this macro just so you can hear how different you can get this to sound if you mess about with it. So that's just an example of how you would use it on some effects to kind of make them sound cooler. I'm going to show an example uh, later on on a bass of uh, doing that as well um, on things that aren't time based like distortions and stuff like that. But for now, let's look at it as a sort of uh, processing tool rather than just using it to pitch stuff around. So um, here I've got a bass sound that I made. Let me just turn that up a bit. So this is just, you know, some dubstep based thing. Um, so let me show you what I'm doing here. So I'm using a vocoder and the vocoder is uh, just modulating itself, but in the carrier here, I've got a pitch shifter. So what I'm doing here with these four stages, let me just turn the vocoder off so you can hear what the bass sound sounds like. And then with the vocoder, so let me just turn off the pitch shifter so you can hear the difference the pitch shifter is making. So the vocoder, you know, it adds a bit to it and then you bring in the pitch shifter. So what I'm doing is I'm slightly altering the pitch here. So you can see a small amount of pitch variation just to create a bit of, um, a bit of dissonance, I suppose. And then I'm also messing with this grain control so that the grains, um, so that it's modulating itself by itself, but the 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 carrier is being... Gra <laughs> so it's modulating itself by itself, um, but the carrier is being affected by the pitch shifter and it's being kind of granulated. You can also do the same thing by putting it into the modulator. So let's put it into the modulator here. And we can mess about with it even more. So 
so yeah you can do um lots of really weird stuff where you chain them on top of each other and do all that weird granular stuff i was showing you earlier in the vocoder and you're going to get really sort of squelchy weird sounds uh the other thing i want to show you is using this as a sort of a stereo processor so um obviously this sound is currently a mono <laughs> But one other cool thing you can do is you can put a, uh, I've just got a multi-band effects here just so I can just affect the highs. Um, you can put in a stereo splitter here, you could put one in each side and slightly offset the pitches. So one is plus 11 and one is minus 10. And then I've got the grains sl set slightly differently as well. You can set them drastically differently if you want. And then I've got a mix knob here where I can mix that effect in and get a cool sort of stereo sound. And we could even mess around with the grains and the pitch a bit more. You just have to be careful if you go too crazy with it, you're going to probably have some um, phase cancellation issues. But uh, the other thing you can do, obviously, once you've got this sound, is do that granular process that I was showing you earlier. to get some weird grainy bass sounds and we can you know stack these again as i said earlier so yeah it's a cool way of turning your basses into weird grainy messes and obviously you can mix that in with the original signal Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is how you can use it on the wet effects of stuff um, to make them sound a little bit different. So I've got this bass line here. That's not it. This is it. Let me turn off that effect I have on the end here. A uh, bit of a spoiler. Uh, okay, so um, I've got just a uh, saw with a bit of white noise on it. And I'm going to add this distortion here. So let's have a look at what's going on in the distortion. So what I've got going on here is I have the distortion with a um, a boost set up here, and then I'm using this envelope to control the boost. And in the uh, wet effects, I've got two pitch shifters where I'm also messing with their pitch with this um, with this envelope here. So let's just turn those off so you can hear how different it sounds. So that's it without, let's add one in. And let's mess around with the pitch and the grains here. So I've also got these mixed, um, so they're not the full signal. The reason is that I want the process signal here from this pitch shifter to uh, go into this one, but still have some of the original signal left. So what I'm really doing is I'm pitching up this effect and then I'm pitching up that effect again. So that has sort of the effect of this, um, this uh, peak that I've got here it's basically duplicating that but instead of just being another peak it's also duplicating the entire effect and pitching it up basically um so I can pitch it up first here and then pitch it up again here and then I can independently modulate the way these are interacting with each other so let's pitch this up instead of down and let's change this one So it's a pretty cool effect. Um, you can get results that you probably wouldn't get otherwise. You can also mess with the grains here, but on a distorted low sound, it's probably going to sound fairly shit. Just as I suspected. So the last thing I want to show you here is sort of my own version of Disperser. So let's uh, just turn this off. So you can hear it's just the saw wave, and then I'm going to turn it on. And then as I sweep through here,
so what I'm doing here is I'm using the multiband effects. Uh, one of the bad things that happens when you use multiband effects is it kind of messes up the phase where it's creating the point um which doesn't sound that bad by itself it doesn't really change the sound that much but if you stack a bunch of them on top of each other then you can um mess up the phase deliberately and then you can mess with it um and that sounds cool by itself but i've also put in some pitch shifters here with grain so we can get like sort of weird pitch effects going on uh in between those bands so you can hear here as i sweep through it it'll start to sound uh really pitchy and grainy and weird so so yeah i think it kind of gives it sort of a squelchy kind of a sound so this is another cool one to put on the vocoder in the modulator or the carrier section um and it will uh create sort of a squelchy kind of a sound um if that's something that you're looking for so um that is uh pretty much all the things i can think to do with uh pitch shifter um you can use it for you know basic stuff like harmonizing stuff and things like that um or you can use it for weird stuff like making your own uh, little disperser sound there or um putting on a vocoder and it's all pretty cool and it's a grain processor as well um so i'm gonna probably have a few presets coming up soon uh, that'll include some of these uh weird processing uh chains i guess um so check out for those and uh, give it a like there as well because uh i like when you like it and uh, i'll see you again soon